Mankind has never been the greatest of physical specimens on this planet. Despite being twice the size of our primal cousins, they'd leave us looking like someone spilled a pan of lasagna. Thankfully, this lack of strength, speed, and claws was balanced by our intelligence, resulting in everything we have today. Swords, bows, guns, bombs, revenge porn, whatever, but we don't often ponder the ramifications of such inventions, nor the resulting moral guilt once something has been unleashed. And that is the goal of Nolan's Oppenheimer. Based on the 2005 biography American Prometheus, Oppenheimer follows the titular theoretical physicist J. Robert Oppenheimer from his early college years abroad in Europe through his tenure as a professor of physics at Berkeley. Shortly after, in 1942, he is recruited by Leslie Groves for the top-secret Manhattan Project that would eventually result in Japan's surrender and perpetual torment by a giant lizard. Splashed between all of this is the drama of the month-long hearings about his security clearance. Both private and public, they were an attempt to discredit Oppenheimer due to personal grievances disguised as a concern over his past affiliations with the Communist Party of America. As his life unfolds, we meet those who taught, worked alongside, and loved Oppenheimer in the secret arms race to unlock the power of the atom and devise one of the most devastating weapons ever conceived by man. All the while, we watch as Oppenheimer begins as a student with an insatiable thirst for knowledge culminating in deep-seated regret at the power he has unlocked for the world. And that's right up Christopher Nolan's alley. He embraces high concept like I do retro gaming and pepperoni pizza. He's a solid director, so if anyone can make a good movie, it is him. Sure, The Dark Knight Rises face planted like you pushed your mother-in-law down the stairs, but he has more Dark Knights and Dunkirks than failures, so I'll take what I can get. Although Nolan does have a bad habit of acting as the smartest guy in the room, approaching movies with a pretentious manner. Case in point, he always has a big reveal to show how non-smooth his brain is. Even his Batman movies couldn't escape this, as though we needed an explanation of the Joker's primary and backup plans. I thought it was pretty evident Joker was messing with Bruce and Harvey the whole time, but Nolan couldn't resist, and Oppenheimer is no different. Now, what I find interesting and frustrating is how hilariously scientific this biopic is for different reasons. For every positive, there is an equal and opposite negative, if you get my meaning. As I summarize, this bio covers many years of Oppenheimer's life in only three hours. The recent midway comes to mind, starting with concerns of war in the Pacific a couple of years before World War II, then covering Pearl Harbor, followed by incursions leading into the titular battle. Oppenheimer does this way worse, at a pace that would give the Flash whiplash. That's not hyperbole. By my estimate, the film technically starts in 26 and ends in 63. To top it off, the film jumps back and forth between three of the six shown times in his life with the speed of a coked-out rabbit. Again, I'm not exaggerating. You know those moments of revelation at the end of a mystery where the detective explains how the murder was committed and it has more flashbacks and cuts than Wolverine's past? That is literally the entire movie, and the pace doesn't begin to slow until around the two-third mark when the bomb is successfully tested at the Trinity site. When I checked my phone, despite the pace, which did not feel like three hours, I realized we had an hour left to go. It's genuinely impressive how this movie makes you believe time is irrelative. And the only real help you get to differentiate between the years is a little bit of makeup to age the actors, which is minimal, and a black and white filter over Lawrence Strauss's perspective. That's it. So if you have ADD, you might hate this movie. On a positive note, this cast is enormous and star-studded. Josh Hartnett, Emily Blunt, Robert Downey Jr., and many more, each playing someone of importance in these pivotal years of American history, and no one gives a bad performance. Even Josh Peck and Harry Groner make an appearance, so if you had Nickelodeon, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and Christopher Nolan crossover on your bingo card, I guess you win? And leading this cast, of course, is Cillian Murphy as Oppenheimer, doing a great job relating the initial depressive and pompous student before shifting to a more conscious and regretful master of his field. So, what's the issue? Overlapping with the breakneck pace, the cast is so large you'll get caught up recognizing different actors, which distracts from the story. It was admittedly a little difficult at times to keep up with what was happening on screen because of remembering faces, who plays who, wondering what moment in time we're at, and the possible sound mixing making dialogue difficult to understand at times. 
So I wouldn't blame you if you wanted to break into the projector room to rewind the film. Lastly, it is a reprieve for a historical film that does not submit to woke politics. This movie focuses on Oppenheimer and the struggle to build the atomic bomb under extreme pressure at the height of World War II. Oppenheimer's past associations with communists and the fledgling party of the time were a valid concern for national security, as was proven with the discovery of Alan May working for Soviet Russia as a spy. Despite this, Oppenheimer never forces McCarthyism, communism, or Oppenheimer's own views down our throats, and simply portrays what happened at the time. So, there you have it. Oppenheimer is a decent watch, if you can keep up with it. Solid acting across the board in a hastened retelling of the father of the atomic bomb's life that does what movies should, by getting you away from the world right now. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.